It's now been well over a year since the anime adaptation of Stone Ocean has concluded, and it's getting to be around that time where everyone starts asking when the next part will be animated, which is the highly anticipated seventh part, Steel Ball Run. So typically, my answer has always been, give it a year or two, that's when we should expect to hear an announcement, as if we take a look at the JoJo animation cycle, it's been pretty consistent for over a decade now, with season 1 ending in April of 2013 and part 3 starting one year later in April 2014. Then, in between parts 3 and 4, there was a 9 month break, in between parts 4 and 5 was a 21 month break, and most recently, in between parts 5 and 6 was a 29 month break. So the wait times for each part are clearly getting longer, although I wouldn't say that necessarily spells anything good or bad for the series, it's most likely just logistics, as since 2012, David Production have grown significantly and taken on more projects, like Captain Tsubasa, Cells at Work, Fire Force, The Spoke Rohan Kishibe, and more, all between the years of 2018 to 2021. So that could explain the slowdown in production post part 4, they just have more on their plate now, and during the 29 month break there was obviously COVID, which slowed down the production of just about everything. So on average, let's say a year and a half in between parts is typical, and considering the circumstances has been pretty consistent. So right now, at the time of making this video, it's been 16 months since part 6 ended, and we are getting close to that time frame for a new part. Although, for the first time, really since I started watching JoJo, that next announcement doesn't feel as certain as it did before. Which from an anime watcher's perspective, you might think, well, what's the problem? Why stop now? Just keep going in order. Although as readers of the manga may understand, there is a handful of unique qualities to part 7 that could prove difficult to adapt. So let's talk about if we will ever see a Steel Ball Run anime, and if so, then when? So starting with the positives, there is some supporting evidence that gives hope for a part 7 anime in the near future. Such as the animation director of parts 1 through 5, Nokatsu Suda, had said in a 2017 interview he wants all parts of JoJo animated, and when asked which part he would be most excited to animate, Suda said part 8 and you can't get to part 8 without going through part 7 first. Also during a Crunchyroll interview in 2020, Suda said that we're still in the middle of the story and there's a lot more to watch and experience, and this was shortly after Golden Wind. So clearly Suda wasn't considering Stone Ocean the end of the project, which are some promising words coming from the man who is at the head of the production. Also back in 2021, there were new patents filed by Shueisha related to Jojo, under the names Jojo Lands, Stone Ocean, and Steel Ball Run. And since then, Stone Ocean had received its anime and the Jojo Land started its serialization, which shows that Shueisha had plans relating to these new patents, although Steel Ball Run is the only one yet to be seen, so either it's in the works or it was just filed ahead of time or maybe just some upkeep. But if you remember back in 2018, the Golden Wind anime was also leaked through early Shueisha trademark filings of its name and logo, which I think adds at least a little credibility to this patent. But outside of Twitter leaks and rumors, that's about all of the solid evidence we have that supports Part 7's anime. Besides the obvious fact that JoJo has been a wildly successful IP for David Production, it's the foundation of their studio and what put them on the map, so you could imagine they would like to continue adapting the series. But as Funny Valentine once said, there is always a balance between the positives and the negatives. So now let's take a look at what stands in Steel Ball Run's way. So remember the chief animation director I mentioned earlier, Naokatsu Suda, who had been working on JoJo since episode 1 and has been extremely passionate about the series since he was a child? Well, the most recent adaptation of Stone Ocean was the only season Suda wasn't involved in, and last year, he left David Production altogether. So all I can do is speculate, but this may or may not have been related to the Netflix acquisition, and the lack of Suda's direction may have caused some of the season's issues, but we really just don't know. What I do know is that it's unfortunate to see someone who has been advocating for the series and wanted to animate all of it has now left the studio capable of doing so. But his departure could just be a personal matter, and that's not to say there isn't still talented people who are passionate about JoJo at David Production, there of course still is, as they managed to produce an incredible conclusion to the original universe. But that's the other thing, at the end of Stone Ocean, it really seemed like it was over, JoJo has ended, as in a sense it has, with its complete roundabout ending and connecting back to the first opening, fulfilling the problem 
prophecy of Sonochino Sadame. So if David Production are going to go into the alternate universe with part 7, would they commit to adapting the entire story by doing something similar to part 1 and showing manga panels of Jodio and Josuke? That would of course be really cool, but are they ready to make that commitment, especially considering how long and detailed the later parts of Jojo have become, with new seasons estimated to be upwards of 50 to 60 episodes? So when you really start to visualize it, you can see there are a lot of things David Pro needs to consider before going into a part 7 anime, and it's not as simple as it was going from parts 4 to 5 or 5 to 6. It's the beginning of a new story and should be presented as such, like Araki did in the original manga. And then of course there is the horses, which is always the most brought up topic whenever it comes to the Steel Ball Run anime, and how the part can never be adapted or it would be crazy expensive because of the horse racing. Which I do agree with to some extent as I understand it is difficult and expensive to animate horses moving fluidly, especially considering how much of Steel Ball Run is horse racing. Animators who have worked on Jojo like Kohei Ishia have even expressed their concerns, saying it would be really expensive to make and take a lot of time to do Right. Although, I also feel like this is an issue the community has kind of blown out of proportion, as instead of being viewed as a hurdle to overcome, it's almost turned into an impossibility when that's just not the case. There are plenty of examples of horses in anime, even within Jojo, that look just fine. And yes, Steel Ball Run would be much longer than these examples, but there are creative solutions to alleviate this problem, like using a mix between 2 and 3D animation like we've seen in Jojo, as well as framing. I'm sure most of the shots would be from the waist up of the characters talking with a shaky camera and galloping to sell the idea and make it all feel real. And these are just basic techniques anyone can notice animators use. So I understand I'm not breaking new ground or trying to offer solutions to the animators, they know better than me, I'm more so just trying to show the community that it's not impossible, and Jojo has never been a crazy Sakuga filled anime so I wouldn't expect that from part 7 either. Not every shot is going to be a fully detailed horse galloping. So I've expressed this opinion before, but I just don't believe that horses are animation's Achilles heel. I understand they're difficult, but then again, a lot of things are difficult to animate. And I often hear the reply that, well, horses are special because their anatomy is so complex and if the movements are even slightly off, it looks terrible because our brains have a reference for what a horse should look like. And honestly, this argument is kind of bullshit. This would be the case if we were talking about CG in a hyper-realistic horse and trying to make it pass as real, which often creates an uncanny Avelli effect, but for animal movements. But when we're talking about anime, we don't need to see every muscle fiber or have it be hyper-realistic. And when I see a simple animation of a horse running in a loop of 12 frames or so, my brain doesn't explode. I know I'm watching an anime and don't expect it to look like real life. So to wrap up this argument, my point is, I think the horse problem is a bit overblown, but I understand they're not easy and it would be more difficult than the previous parts. So the solution will have to come down to maybe more time or just creative problem solving and workarounds from the studio. As it seems so unbelievable that a team that have already animated six parts of Jojo and all of the wild stands would just say to themselves, oh, this part has horses, that's too much, we can't do it. Also, that goes completely against the studio's philosophy, because if you guys didn't know, the David in David Production is named after David vs. Goliath, you know, the biblical underdog story of the man who overcomes great challenges through his creativity. So taking on challenges should be embraced by the studio, and Steel Ball Run is just another Goliath they need to overcome. So my personal take is that yes, I do think David Pro will animate part 7 eventually, it'll just be a longer wait than the previous seasons, as they should take the time to figure out how to sustainably animate Araki's monthly style authentically and the horse racing over the course of 50 or so episodes with a respectable standard of quality. So if Steel Ball Run is really coming, one of my biggest concerns, even more than the horses, is that they continue partnering with Netflix for the distribution. It would just be a damn shame if Steel Ball Run is given another batch release format. But if we are stuck with Netflix, either release episodes weekly or just do seasons like any other anime. The batch format was complete nonsense we all know that by now, it didn't work well for animators or viewers, so my personal best case scenario is two 24 episode seasons, start as Crusader style, or do what Bleach is doing and have four cores, 13 episodes a core which totals in at 52 episodes. Either way, just as long as they decide on a release format before or while animating, I think that would be best for the adaptation and would allow them to pace the episodes and seasons accordingly. Unlike Stone Ocean, which was paced like parts 4 and 5 but with a 9 month gap in the middle of its release. Release. So closing things out with predictions, optimistically, announcement this year with a 2025 release, 
realistically 2025 announcement with a 2026 release. I just couldn't imagine they would keep Jojo dormant within the studio for more than four years. If they're gonna do it, why not sooner than later and keep up the momentum from the previous seasons, especially if they plan on tackling parts 8 and 9. So those are my hopeful, but also realistic expectations, and I want to hear what you guys think as well, so definitely let me know in the comments down below and we can continue the discussion. Also, please drop a like on the video if you enjoyed, or if you're looking forward to the part 7 anime, and together we can manifest a 2024 announcement, hopefully. But, you know, it wouldn't hurt to start building that hype early. Also, subscribe to the channel for more JoJo content. 83% of viewers in the last 30 days are not subscribed for some reason, so if you're in the 83, join the other side. It's chill around here. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll talk to you all real soon in a new video. Until then, I'm out. Peace.